All right. So suppose we got a stepper motor here. It's a nice little box. We'll say it's a NEMA 17. Who really cares? Now, um, stepper motors are open loop devices. Right? They're open loop. We'll do that with a nice part. Open loop devices. You know, uh, hello. You could just. Thanks. Let's go away. Oh, God. Now I got a little blue patch. Crap. Let's see if I'm going to do it. Um, oh, God. This is embarrassing. All right. Um, so, stepper motors, open loop devices. So, what does that mean? Well, Suppose we tell a stepper to rotate the steps, right? We say, hey, move 250 steps, which correlates to some, geez, um, to some rotation here. That's all fine and dandy. Um, but now, suppose I want to be a jerk to this poor stepper motor. I want to take some channel locks, and I want to grab right onto the end of the shaft and prevent it from rotating, right? So if I grab onto it with some sort of long lever arm and I just hold it and now it does not rotate. But the control electronics that are you know wired to this guy, zzzz, we got some control electronics here, maybe it's an Arduino, a little chip there. Um, the control electronics that are wired to this inherently don't really have any way to know that these steps didn't happen, right? And so it has no way of knowing. So that's the open loop nature because it has no way it, ooh, I like that purple and blue. But anyways, um, it has no way of knowing because there's no sensor in this loop. There's nothing to say, hey, we missed this step. And so that's can be the dangerous part about stepper motors is you basically have to, you have to design knowing that you've got the torque to do what you need to do. And if you do over torque it, now all of your positions are going to be off because your system's going to have to assume that it made that movement. So, um, so a case where this might be relevant is uh, if your filament gets jammed in some way, shape, or form, and your uh, and your extruder uh, isn't able to push it through, or it starts skipping steps, you've got really no way to detect that on a 3D printer. Um, so it's it, it is kind of, the biggest thing is this is the cost saving things. Uh, there are some closed loop steppers that do exist. Um, kind of the in most interesting one, you could imagine that there, there's all sorts of position sensors. Like you could put like encoders on the end of these, or you might even be able to do like, if it's some sort of linear movement, you might be able to do some sort of string potentiometer, um, so kind of like a tape measure, uh, variable resistor that has a string that pulls and changes resistance. Uh, the coolest thing, in my opinion, with steppers uh, is uh, they call it uh, sensorless. Sensorless feedback. Uh, I, I can't remember if that's exactly what the term is, but I'll show you. This is just what it was explained to me as. Um. So we know that a stepper motor is controlled with just pulses, right? We turn on the coils as needed. And so uh, that's just varying the current. So a good signal might look something like this. Just on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, as it's tooting around. Now suppose I went in here, hello, I went in here and did a, uh, I, I held it and prevented it from moving. So a bad signal might look something like this. Well, maybe, and maybe it kind of bounces down some negative voltage because it didn't move the way it expected. Something along those lines. I'm not entirely sure. The key is that it's different. It's it's going to be clearly different when uh, a motor is over torquing. You can see this. And so uh, this uh, 
these are current waveforms of chronomony. Right? So, uh, so what that means is there are things called current sensors that you can add into your control electronics, right? So you add those in here. And with that, you can start to uh, monitor how the current to your motor is looking. And if you start getting this phenomenon, you know that you're missing steps and you're not moving. And so you don't actually, you can assume that your position hasn't changed. And, uh, and so that's, that is one way to, uh, to kind of measure and see uh, if, to close the loop and to see if uh, there are any problems in your system. Um, so they call it sensorless feedback because the, the mechanics to see the motor is a normal motor. There's nothing else that has to be attached on there, but it still is using a sensor.